housing delivery and infrastructure development are fundamental necessities for the economic growth of any nation. However, the provision of these essential services on the required scale to meet demand remains problematic for most countries and governments worldwide. The lack of adequate supply of housing and infrastructure project finance has been identified as a major obstacle to such development. Studies have shown that the existing conventional finance and banking structures are unlikely to provide adequate funding streams necessary to address the acute shortage of housing and infrastructure, particularly in developing countries. This is housing development, the only program that advocates for the provision of decent, low-cost housing for all Nigerians. Let's see the current happenings in this sector. I'll be right back. As usual, I remain Flora Annie, your housing diva. The Federal Mortgage Bank has inaugurated 180 affordable housing units in order to provide safe and affordable homes for Nigerian workers. The inauguration exercise took place at Unkwele Ezunaka Affordable Housing Project in Anambra State with Governor Chukuma Soludo assuring his administration's commitment to partner relevant agency to make houses available to the people. Business Director of Federal Mortgage Bank we echo their commitment to deliver quality and affordable homes to Nigerian workers. Governor Chukuma Soludo reiterated his administration's commitment to create robust atmosphere for investment to thrive and provide better living environments for the citizens. The Nigerian Institute of Building has tasked the incoming administration with making the construction of mass housing for Nigerians a top priority. The creation of mass housing units, according to the Institute, will not only alleviate the housing shortage, but will also address a social welfare issue. It will also reflect the economy, generating jobs for our growing population. Speaking on the sidelines of a two-day workshop organized by Nigerian Institute of Building, held in Abuja with the theme, Innovation and Technology in Housing Development, with sub-themes Understanding the Nigeria Housing Challenge, Technology-Driven Mass Housing Provision and Innovations to Address Housing Affordability. The President of the Institute, Professor Johanna Izam, said that there is an urgent need for mass housing provision. Africa International Housing Show, AIHS, on Friday paid a courtesy visit to New Material Nigeria Company Limited, a member of the Global 500 Enterprise, China National Building Materials Group Corporation, also referred to as CNBN, speaking during the visit to the Kujay headquarters of the company, ARHS CEO Festus Adebayo noted that the tour to NMNC is aimed at updating the company on the preparations for the 17th ARHS. ARHS team were received by the executive chairman of the company, who spoke about the product's quality benefits and why Nigeria housing industry need the product, after which the team was taken round the factory for inspection. Adebayo commended the management of NMNC for creating job opportunities for Nigerians, training and retraining of their staff, which Nigerians form 95%. He also used the opportunity to call on the government to find a lasting solution to the power problem facing the country. the full details of the news do well to visit www.africanhousingnews.com the success of any sustainable housing delivery system depends on a wide range of factors which includes 
availability and accessibility to mortgage finance. It is no longer strange to know that some Nigerians, especially the low-income groups living in the cities, are homeless. The reason is that the cost of construction or renting an accommodation is simply beyond the reach of an average Nigerian. Let's listen to these Nigerians on Voices on the Street as they air their opinions on assessing mortgage in Nigeria. I think um, the mortgage for an average Nigerian living here in Abuja, a civil servant cannot afford because it's on the high side. I think government should look inwards, look at other options. Because um, if they can go into um, high-rise buildings where it can be done at an affordable prices, at least the price can go down. But for now, it's on the high side. Accessibility of mortgage is key. Many states even assess it. At the end of the day, the house cannot be sold. Why do we have that challenge? It's because sometimes need assessment of uh, the key of the cars are not taken into consideration. That is why at the end of the day, when once they are done with build the building, people will reject it. They will not come for it. And when you are having situation like that, you know what it means. Before you know, the precision will start uh, affecting the house. We have such in Pogi State, where at the end of the uh, at the end of that uh, completion of that um, structure, it doesn't worth the amount that it goes for. So when you have that kind of situation, those are supposed to be the optical the when they reject it. I think that's one of the main constraints why the use of a mortgage is having a serious setback. Ordinarily, if they ease the, uh, the process of assessing it, and at the same time, they need an analysis of, of the cars that are uh, putting into consideration. I believe everything will fly away as supposed to be. On the mortgage, I think the best option Nigeria has is to start with the youth too. Like from 25, an average Nigerian youth should start um, contributing. So that they will now learn the saving attitude that towards this age, I'm getting a house. Then with that, the government will now plan along with their old age. Not just when they get to 40, start selling their affordable houses, which they did not plan for. There have been a lot of reservation about a um, mortgage system in Nigeria because of the flexibility and the um, cost of um, assessing it and the process you need to go through to, for you to be able to assess uh, the most, uh, house in Nigeria, which government needs to uh, needs to look into very well to make sure that it's more flexible for the for, especially for those in civil service, so that it will be it will be very easy for them to be able to assess it and pay in a very flexible uh, manner. Voices on the street there. Several housing construction and delivery system in Nigeria is targeted mainly at the middle and high income group of the population that can either pay cash or assess mortgage finance from the banks. What is the way out for low income earners? How can more low income earners become homeowners? Now let's listen to this housing industry stakeholders. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, mortgage finance requirement for the country is conservatively put at between 15 to 20 trillion naira, whereas housing stock in Nigeria is estimated at 10.7 million, out of which only about 5% is in formal mortgage. Low-income earners have been facing challenges meeting one of the basic needs of man, shelter, due to lack of access to finance. The poor mortgage system in Nigeria has made housing unaffordable for millions. Addressing the mortgage system in Nigeria, Mr. Abdul Hakim Babatunde Uthman says the government must partner with the private sector to deliver affordable housing via mortgage, urging the incoming administration to reduce the interest rate so as to enable many become homeowners before retirement. Government cannot do it alone. The private sector must partner with government to deliver 
affordable houses. Uh, the new incoming administration must pay attention to uh, playing the role of providing a level playing field for all the stakeholders in the industry so that uh, the, cost, the uh, cost of money, that is the interest rate, should be brought down. There's no way anybody can take a mortgage with, uh, at a double digit interest rate. And uh, the issue of land, administration, titling of land has to be quickly addressed because uh, developers are all very scared now of even taking government land for development because of litigation all over the place. If you want to tackle corruption, people, generality of the people must have access to credit. Reacting, Prince. Sheyi Lufa Deju says with the recent increase in support by the mortgage banks from 15 million to 50 million, a lot of people will benefit and take advantage of the system, which will in turn savage the housing needs of Nigerians. The way out is uh, it's very simple. You know the federal government has established the Federal uh, Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. The purpose of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is to uh, provide uh, long-term financing for uh, for people who are benefiting from property development. So, recently the Federal Mortgage Bank increased the uh, the level of support from 15 million naira to 50 million naira, which means that a lot of more a lot of people now will now be able to benefit and take advantage of that. The market is very large. And therefore, the capacity to do whatever we need to do is going to be increasing. And therefore, we are pleased that uh, the mortgage bank and other institutions will be able to continue to service the mortgage of properties that are constructed. Nigeria's housing shortage still persists, despite the real estate industry contributing 5.64% to the country's GDP in 2022. The federal government would need to spend 21 trillion naira to address the country's 28 million housing deficit. This is to meet the needs of a rapidly growing population, which is estimated to be 219 million. For sustainable housing delivery to be a reality in Nigeria, strategic investment in housing infrastructure and housing finance is non-negotiable and must be fully encouraged by the government, as it is the foundation for economic growth and improved standard of living of the populace. After the break, my guest, a former president of the Nigerian Institute of Beauty, will be joining me in the studio. Stay with me. It is time to embrace town planning for sustainable development in the country. Where effective town planning is carried out, social and economic facilities are equitably distributed and accessible to the population, health challenges will be minimized, productivity will greatly improve, wealth will increase and safety will be enhanced. The enactment of the Nigerian Urban and Regional Planning Law in 1992, which became an Act of Parliament, as CAP N138 LFN 2004 stipulates that approval of relevant development control department shall be required for any land development. Let us say no to unplanned settlements. Say no to illegal and unauthorized developments. Say no to land grabbing. 
avoid demolition. Let's end the rising proliferation of illegal structures and housing estates. Engage in only approved development. Let's bring sanity back to our land. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Institute of Town Palace with the support of Housing Development Advocacy Network. Welcome back. With me in the studio is Builder Ayo Bamishila, a former president of the Nigerian Institute of Building and currently the managing director of Banikan Nigerian Limited. Good to have you here, Builder Bamishila. Thank you very much for having me. So as of today, Nigeria, we have a housing shortfall of over 17 million. What strategy do you think the government should put in place to make more Nigerians, homeowners, to create more affordable housing for Nigerians, especially the low-income earners. People talk about affordable housing. Me, I don't understand what affordable housing means. Same thing with low-cost housing. Affordable, See, low cost. let us use the language that. Let us try and simplify it. When you say affordable, it is subjective the, what makes it subjective affordable to who i can buy a house of s amount of million naira without looking back i can't eat as what as affordable to, you. to me okay but somebody will find it very difficult to do what to buy something of two million without taking loan is that not so? Okay. Let us now break it down. Now, when you talk about housing, we are talking about one, access to a decent accommodation. That access to decent accommodation can come in two ways. One, either as a self occupier, self owner occupier, okay, or through rent, okay. If it is self-owner occupier, okay, some people don't need intervention. People that are below, I will come to the middle one because I really want to deal with the middle one. People that are below need serious intervention. They cannot be owner occupier. What they need is social housing. Okay, Builder Bamishila, at this point, I'm going to pause you here. We'll go for a quick break and we'll be back to continue this one on one interview with Builder Bamishila. <laughs> Is it again? Oga, okay. I they drive this car, my mind no there. My landlord is on my neck. Your landlord again. I thought I have told you this before. Get a mortgage, register with NHF scheme, and get a home up front. What is so difficult about this? Oga, okay. I will do just that. See, eh? I will shame that my landlord. Mortgage. <laughs> At the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, everyone deserves a home. Welcome back. You're still watching Housing Development. And I still have Builder Bamishile right here with me. Okay, Builder Bamishile, let me allow you to continue. Before we went on that quick break, you mentioned the people that really need government intervention to be able to own a house of their own. So let me, let me leave you to continue. Give us a statistics, a breakdown. If these are actually implemented, do you think more Nigerians will be able to own homes? The salary that we pay people and we call it take home cannot even take them to the bus stop. Please, let's take note of that. Now, assuming we are talking about two-bedroom apartment for five million, and the person is to pay for a period of 25 years. Let's say a period of 25 years. Okay? If we say 5 million divided by 25, what are we going to get? We are likely to get 200,000. Now, if it's to pay 200,000 naira for mortgage, 
it means that 200,000 naira must not be more than 20% of his salary or 25% of his salary. Is that not the case? Let us say 25%. Divide 200,000 by 25. You are going to get 16.6666. So every month, it must be paying what? It must be paying 16,666. If that is what is going to be paying, translate that to 25% of his money. If you work it out, you will agree with me that you're supposed to be paying him 66,000 naira, 66,066 for individuals. Pay people decent salary for them to be able to do what? To live in decent houses. Nigerians, we should stop deceiving ourselves. Thank you, Builder Abamishile, for your time on the program. Thank you for having me. Okay, I've been speaking with Builder Ayo Bamishile, a former president of the Nigerian Institute of Building. The Nigerian housing deficit put at over 17 million cannot be adequately tackled without availability and accessibility to housing fund. I'll be back. Stay with me. The program is housing development. Infinity Trust Mortgage Bank PLC recently held its 17th annual general meeting in Abuja. Now here's a full report. The board of directors of Infinity Trust Mortgage Bank PLC last Thursday approved the audited financial statements for the year which ended December 31, 2022. The company disclosed this during its 17th annual general meeting on Thursday in Abuja. The bank highlighted its turnover achievement in 2022 to over 2 billion with a closing increase of 29% in its PBT from 656.9 million in 2021 to 847.1 million which it described as commendable. Speaking at the 17th AGM, the chairman of the board, Dr. Adeinka Bibilari, spoke on the management and the importance of economizing so as to increase the company's turnovers and ensure dividends are paid to shareholders. He also announced the declaration of financial dividends as agreed by the board to a turn of six kobos per ordinary share of 50 kobos. The directors are recommending a dividend of six kobo per ordinary share of 50 kobo held as at the close of business on April 14th, 2023. If approved, the total dividend to be paid to shareholders for the financial year ended at 4th December 2022 would be 250 million, 226,743 naira, 20 kobo only. I have a move. At a gross dividend of 250 million, 226,743 naira, 20 kobo. In respect of the financial year ended 31st December 2022, be paid to all shareholders registered in the books of this bank as at the closure of register on the 14th of April 2023, and thereby declared. The managing director, Mr. Sunday Olumorin, says the non performing loan is on the rise as a result of certain policies. He encourages shareholders to rest assured of recovering every penny that has gone out. He also expressed satisfaction with the performance of the bank for the year under review. It was fantastic and it has been fantastic all this while. You will recall that uh, since we started business about, uh, uh, about over 17 years ago, we, have, we started making profit. We started making profit in 2005 and since then we have been making profits consistently and the profit has always been on the increase and we have been paying dividends through since 2007 that's about 16 years running so it has been very very fantastic we had a turnover of about 2.1 billion naira from 1.7 billion naira in the previous year 
so it has been it has been wonderful stakeholders also commended the efforts of the board for ensuring their dividends are duly paid annually appraising the bank for its robust financial performance in the year under review infinity bank had been a bank you know that have been consistent in fact there have been a bank that have been paying dividends for the past 16 years and they have been consistent in it. So shareholders are always very happy at their annual general meeting. Actually, Infinity Trust has always been one of my favorite banks. Not because of anything, just because of the dividend they have been giving us. You know, every, every investor's happiness is profit. And what we are talking about the profit, we talk about the dividend. And for about 16 years now, Infinity have continuously paying us profit. Even though it's in Kobo Kobo, at least it's something. We still have something to take home every end of the year. The highlight of the annual general meeting includes the reappointment of the company's external auditors, Aminu, Ibrahim and Co. Housing is stability, housing is dignity, and we need solutions that are credible and bold and radical to solve the housing crisis bedeviling the nation. On that note, I end today's edition of Housing Development. Thanks for watching. I remain your housing diva, Flora Annie. Do have a lovely day. <music>